there are a whole series of issues which are affecting people who vote for the British National Party. I come from Dewsbury where at the last general e election we had the largest BNP vote anywhere in the country. I campaigned and I canvassed and I met many, many people who voted for the BNP. And there are real issues around poverty, around deprivation, around lack of social mobility and immigration. It is an issue. There are many people who feel that the pace of change in their communities has been too bad and that uh, has been too uh, fast and that the government has not properly resourced those particular areas to respond to that change. Now, we can do one of two things. I I'm not prepared to have the debate as the BNP would like to have the debate on immigration, which is all about black and brown people. This is not a race debate. This is a debate about resources. And the mainstream political parties have a responsibility to take on this debate to actually tackle the issues, the underlying issues that are making some people vote for the BNP. Because I've said this before, and I'll say it again. What the BNP are, their activists and their members, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Mr Griffin has proved that by his evasive answers today. But there are many, many people out there who vote for the British National Party who are not racist. There is lots of statistical evidence to prove that. And therefore, what we have to do is we have to go out and say to those people as mainstream political parties, we are prepared to listen, we are prepared to deal with this, and you do not have to turn to a racist, fascist party who have their own agenda to deliver uh, their, uh, their solutions on your concerns. But what are you... What are you What precisely are you prepared to do? Well, there are a number of things that we have to do. First of all, I don't think people in this country say we don't want black and brown people. What they say is we need a cap on the number of people who are coming here. We need to know year by year how many people are going to be coming. We, ne we need to know year by year how many people are leaving. We need to know that those people who should not be here are removed properly. We need to know... We need to... We need to we Who's need saying do it? Do it. Hmm. Well, this talk. is absolutely just do it. No, You on. just lost 40,000 people in the sir, system. Sir, Where I are would they? Say to you, sir, I would say to you that the Conservative Party policy is very, very clear. We would have an annual cap, we would have an annual limit. We would look every year, we would speak to industry, we would look at our resources, we would look at That's our exactly needs. What we but what we would right. not do, what we would not do, hold on a minute, what we would not do <coughs> is pull up the drawbridge because we'll Britain should have the brightest <laughs> and the best from around okay, the world so and we should welcome them because they make a contribution All to right, our society. The man over there. I, must, I want to hear from you. I come to you. The man up there with the moustache, then I come to you with the striped tie. Was there yeah. the Conservative Party that joined the EU that's allowing all the uh, migrants from other countries coming in at the moment? So it was Conservatives doing, not the Labour's doing, wasn't it? So the, the European Union yeah. immigration yeah. is what yeah. worries you. And you, yeah. sir, in the front here. I couldn't agree. The gentleman here. I couldn't agree more with the, the lady on the panel. I'm sorry, I forgot. Saeed of us, Well, there are I, two ladies. Bonnie Greer. Well, this that? lady oh, here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Bonnie's name. Um, but I think the problem is Labour has failed with immigration. People are disgruntled about that. There are all these reports that you read, things that people see in their own communities. <coughs> and an easy <coughs> way to vent your frustration and your anger is a cross in the box for the BNP. And a lot of people, I would imagine, that voted BNP did it out of frustration and anger and a feeling of, what else can I do? And they're not racist people, I would imagine. So, so Nick Griffin is nodding, saying that people voted for him not because they uh, pursued his policies, but because they I'm just were sorry frustrated. sorry to say, Nick, some, but I would, cases, yes. I would imagine that's the case. And I welcome um, the Conservative Party's uh, okay. policy Chris, on immigration. Hold, hold on a moment. Let's just hear some more points. The person in purple there in the middle, yes. Um, I would... I would say that uh, I would answer no personally to the question. The reason being that everybody here knows that Nick, Nick Griffin's mission is to give the BNP more credibility and pull this sort of veneer of acceptability on, uh, on top of the party. Where, so he's going he's gonna to wrap his sort of slimy arms around any, any, any bandwagon going to give them a bit more credibility and make everybody nod their heads, even if it's sort of you know, hollow. And the person in the middle, the woman in the middle there? Yes, yes. thank you. Um, I agree with everything that um, Baroness um, Varsai said, but also as well, I think the, um, the public who are voting for the BNP do need to be educated about what um, Nick stands for. He's basically a wolf in sheep's clothing, as he's demonstrated this evening. How does somebody who is non-racist and all these lies he's saying that's been said said about him, end up going to the Hitler, where you were celebrating his birthday or something not too long ago. And also as well, going back to what Bar the Baroness said, the parties must listen, because one of the things, I'm sitting here, and every time Jack Straw, somebody says, Afro-Caribbean, I'm cringing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> African-Caribbean. No,
Okay, hold on. No, don't go. Chris Hume. Well, let me come back to the question, which was, has immigration and the failures of immigration policy uh, helped the BMP? I think there have been undoubted failures of immigration policy. I think there's been some really shambolic uh, delivery of immigration policy over the last few years. For example, our border control, which was a process begun, by the way, by the Conservative government and continued by Labour, our border control no longer is able to count people out. The result is we issue nearly two million visas every year to students and other people on short-term visas, and we don't know whether they've left. And that is absolutely unbelievable. And the first thing we need to do is to make sure we get back control uh, over, over our borders. The other thing, we've co I think the government, frankly, made an unbelievable mistake uh, in its projections of what was going to happen when we, among very, very few other European countries, decided we were going to allow everybody from the new Central and Eastern European member states in. The government projected it would be 56,000 people would come here. It ended up being 766,000. That is probably, I'm a bit of a connoisseur of bad government forecasts, but that is probably one of the worst government forecasts on record. And, and had has they, had, now hang on, hang on, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Had they known that that would be the figure, what could they have done to change well, it? It was very, part of very, the European very, Union, no, no, which you support. No, it you wasn't, it, but, but no, what could absolutely they have done? wrong, David. What it, was not, it was not. What happened was that most of the other European countries decided to have transitional arrangements mm. whereby they didn't allow uh, immigration, free immigration from Central Eastern Europe. For and how we long? Alone, for how long? For ten years. Yeah. But the no, point is that, that if, if a Denmark, Between Ireland and, and the UK, uh, we decided to go ahead and open our borders immediately. You, you now obviously if you couldn't go, we were on the basis of government oh, forecasts which were oh. entirely wrong. Now let me come back to the final point. No, hold on a second. No, just deal with this one. Jack Straw says that you wanted this to happen. We, yes, we looked, we you looked, voted for it. We looked at the, I didn't, I wasn't in the Parliament, but wow. we looked at this uh, forecast mm. on the assumption that the government's forecast was correct. It was unbelievably so the inaccurate. The Conservative, right. Right. The Conservative right. Party would okay, be the only one Okay, let's not go any further there, down the European road. Nick, hang on, there's, okay, a rather no. important, there's a rather important part of the argument about the success of the BMP. Quick. Because the evidence on the success of the BMP is very simple. It's not primarily about immigration. What it is actually about is people being disconnected from the political system. And we're the only party in Burnley that has managed to halve BNP support uh, over the last four years. We've actually now running the council, and we've done that no. by listening to people, and the, the problem is, frankly, there aren't enough Liberal Democrats out there doing what All we've right. done in Burnley All to right. turn back the BNP, because we're the only party that's okay, actually okay, done okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Nick Griffin. It is, ra it is rather surprising to have a senior Lib Dem masquerading, it seems, as an anti-immigration party. But Jack Straw was actually right, I think, on this, when he said that, no, it's not the Labour Party's fault. It's the fault of the entire political elite, which has imposed an enormous multicultural program, experiments, on the British people without so much as buy your leave. All we've got out of it is tax bills. It's transformed our country to the extent that the government's own figures uh, interpreted by Nick, demographers. Who are the British people? Who are you talking Can I about? Finish and then come. Yeah, then yeah, come yeah I'd like to know. Yes, this. yeah. Okay. The government's own figures, according to demographers at Oxford University, show that the indigenous British, the people who've been here, the, the whites, the whites. No, that's it. The skin colour is irrelevant, Jack. Skin colour is irrelevant. What, 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 <laughs> What do you mean by white, Mr. Griffith? Uh, indigenous? I think you mean this, white? This gets to the very wait, point. Wait, can I ask a question? Because you agree with me. Why are right. you against mixed marriage? Wait, wait, wait. If you all attack on different fronts, Thank we'll you. get nowhere. Yes. Just finish what you were yeah. saying. I think we've reached the absolute nub of it. No one here, Jack Straw, wouldn't dare to go to New Zealand and say to a Maori, what do you mean indigenous? You wouldn't dare to go to uh, North America and say to an American Red Indian, a Sioux or whatever, what do you mean indigenous? We're all the same. The indigenous people of these islands, the people, the English, the Scots, the Irish and the Welsh. The whites. The, the, the colour is irrelevant. The it's the people who have been here overwhelmingly for the last 17,000 years. We are the Aborigines here. That's the <laughs> you, you, I'm sorry if you laugh. If you want to look at the scientific evidence online or whatever, read, read the books by various scientists. The simple fact is that the majority of the British people are descended from people who've lived here since time immemorial. Well, not, not and it's extraordinarily racist. This is genuinely racist. When you seek to deny the English, you people wouldn't even let us have our name on the census form. That is racism, and that's why people are voting British National Party, because we feel shut out in our own country. They have um, gu guided tours in the Lake District have been cancelled because only English people, white people, were going on them. It, um, 
Oh, what nonsense! Another Madoff fan. Another Madoff fan. No, it's not. Another Madoff fan.